Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Natmi and today we're discussing the maxillary nerve. Uh, maxillary nerve is a very important content of the pterygopalatine fossa that I've already covered in my previous video. If you haven't watched that, you should go ahead and watch it. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. And guys, let's get started with the maxillary nerve. Basically, the maxillary nerve, where do you remember? Where did it come from? As I've already talked about, we're going to talk about the structures with bullet points. And the first bullet point should be about its origin and last should be about its termination. It originated from the trigeminal ganglion. Uh, we remember there is this uh, nerve called the trigeminal nerve. It's basically the fifth cranial nerve and it is called the trigeminal because it has three important branches that come out of it and three parts, right? The one of them is the maxillary nerve and its origin is from the ganglion of the trigeminal nerve and that lies in the Michel's cave and once it emerges from the trigeminal ganglion it runs in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus you remember there was a structure called the cella tersica so on either side of it was the cavernous sinuses and in the lateral wall of those sinuses it ran the maxillary nerve runs uh, in the lateral wall of those sinuses so lateral wall of the cavernous sinus is our next point uh, and finally, it uh, enters through the foramen rotundum in the middle cranial fossa. Uh, and once it enters the foramen rotundum, talk about the foramen rotundum in the pterygopalatine fossa. From the posterior boundary, there was a communication to the middle cranial fossa through the foramen rotundum. And it is through this foramen rotundum, the maxillary nerve enters your pterygopalatine fossa. When the maxillary nerve enters the pterygopalatine fossa, it traverses it and eventually enters the inferior orbital fissure where it continues as the infraorbital nerve which is the termination of the maxillary nerve so infraorbital nerve is it termination this is how it terminates through the inferior orbital fissure so the infraorbital nerve is the final point because that is the termination of the maxillary nerve now let's talk about its branches. While it was in the middle cranial fossa, the maxillary nerve gave him an angial branch. Makes sense, all right? While it was in the pterygopalatine fossa, it gave two branches. One, ganglionic branches for the pterygopalatine ganglion that we'll discuss in the pterygopalatine ganglion. And the next, it gave these two important branches called the, called the posterior superior alveolar nerve, posterior superior alveolar nerve, and the zygomatic nerve. I'm sure this rings a bell. The posterior superior alveolar nerve is, I'm sure you can recall that this was a branch from the third part of your maxillary artery. So these are basically accompanying the artery of the same name. Posterior superior alveolar nerve is going to accompany the posterior superior alveolar artery of the maxillary artery. This posterior superior alveolar nerve just goes into the maxilla and supplies the upper molar teeth because it's superior and it's posterior. Makes sense. Next branch we have is the zygomatic nerve now what the zygomatic nerve does is it uh, accompanies the infraorbital nerve through the inferior orbital fissure all right and when it emerges outside the orbit it divides into its terminal branches these are the zygomaticofacial you've heard these before and zygomaticotemporal nerves these two supply the skin of the face and the skin of the temple and finally the final branch or you can see the termination of the maxillary nerve is the infraorbital nerve let's talk about the course of this so the infraorbital nerve enters through the just like the infraorbital artery we talked about which was coming from the, the third part of the maxillary artery i hope you can remember that it runs in the inferior orbital fissure and enters the orbit and runs on the floor of the orbit in the infraorbital groove then it traverses the infraorbital canal after which it enters through the infraorbital foramen which lies on the maxilla if you remember just few centimeter below the inferior margin of the orbit we had this infraorbital foramen through that it emerges on the face and when it emerges on the face it gives labial nasal and palpebral branches these are the terminal branches of the infraorbital nerve so the nasal palpebral and labial branches and this supplies a large area of the skin of the face on its way the infraorbital nerve also gives uh, the branches that are coinciding with the branches of the infraorbital artery if you remember these are the someone because posterior superior alveolar uh, nerve has been supplying the molar teeth what about the uh, premolars what about the incisors so someone has to give the anterior middle superior alveolar as well and that is what the orbital infraorbital nerve does so infraorbital nerves branches are the anterior superior alveolar and middle superior alveolar branches middle superior alveolar supply the premolar and anterior superior alveolar obviously the canines and incisors the front teeth and also they supply the maxillary air sinuses with nerve supply 
So this is the maxillary nerve. Really hope that made sense. I hope you understood well. Thank you so much for watching.